What's up guys, it's Mitchell Deity, and I haven't made a video in a while, but I need to today, definitely, because ML Politis is coming in two weeks, and she is going to change this game dramatically. Uh, for any in-game player, at least, especially. And if you get her as a newer player, you'll be able to use her. You need really good gear. <laughs> the better gear you have, obviously, the better she's going to be. Uh, she's going to need high speed. We're going to go over all her skills and stuff, but she is going to completely change the meta and everything, how people draft. She's probably going to be one of the most pre-banned units. I think people would rather ban her over Lua. She seems insane. I'll say right now, she is a guarantee pool on her, no matter what. So her design, amazing too. Like This might actually get some people to try Epic 7, because her design is amazing. So <clears throat> the, the one thing with her is her stats are just really good. So you don't need to build any damage on her. She's going to be full bulk, full speed. And then maybe effectiveness. Maybe effectiveness. I don't even think you need effectiveness, to be fair. I think you just go full bulk. If you do go effectiveness, you don't go effectiveness. <laughs> you don't. You might put a splash on there, as that'll be like the extra skill, or uh, yeah, the extra stat, because you'll have gear that has like HP. You don't want crit chance or crit damage, so you'll just put effectiveness on her for that. But her bulk is really good to begin with. It's 6-6, six, 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 which is good. So it's not insane, but it's pretty high for a ranger, at least. Pretty high. So the thing is, whenever the match starts, you're going to have stealth. So she can work into Zeo. You don't have to worry about Zeo. And you're going to be building her as fast as you can. She has 120 base speed. I think that's the same as Lua. Uh, so whatever Lua is, my Lua is like 302. So I will have a 302 of her unless I get lucky and get a piece. I am stuck on speed. I have been for like two years. I can't get anything above 22. But <clears throat> now she is going to start with stealth and then get stealth every turn. Because once you molar her, it's 100% chance. So you don't need a guiding lighter, meaning she has artifact options. There's a lot of ranger artifacts that have no use right now because guiding light's necessary on everything. But with this, you can. There's gonna be a bunch of artifacts you can like get creative and do whatever you want. You can make her bulkier with proof of valor. There's a bunch of other artifacts. Let me know which ones you're gonna use. I need to look at what all ranger artifacts because ninety percent of ranger artifacts are just useless. So uh, the biggest part of her thing though is she decreased the amount of resources gained by fifty percent. That is focus and that is fighting spirit. So ML Landy, AU Fiend, Lionheart Sermia. Lulu car, ML shoe. Uh, there's a million options that this just affects. Just this being on the board hurts your opponent, like Bryce Area. Just keeps them from re well, Bryce Area hurts yourself. Uh, Bellion is a good example. Can't gain souls, but this just a permanent effect. It's just always as long as she's alive, it's always going. Meaning this slows down the momentum of momentum of your opponent dramatically. If their landy pops off, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, if their AU fiend counters a few times, she still won't have S3. Uh, Lulu car, if you click a non-attack skill, you won't get trucked. <laughs> uh, Lionheart Sermia, if you dual attack on accident, Lionheart Sermia doesn't have enough to S3. She'll proc, but she won't have enough fighting spirit to S3 until she procs twice. Uh, or procs, does a single target attack, and then the following turn she can do her thing. But either way, that's crazy. That shows her skill too. Now, moving forward, you can see... I mean, we can look at her skill too here. Oh, actually, it's a passive. <laughs> it just showed the passive. You started with stealth. At the end of the turn, you go back into stealth, which is huge because stealth mitigates damage. A lot of people think stealth just makes sure you can't get hit, but when you're stealth and get hit by an AoE attack, you're going to I think it halves your damage. So if you're going to stealth every turn, your opponent does have a way to keep you, like an unbuffle skill, then you have your damage from an AoE attack every turn, and you can't be hit by any single target. So it's super, super beneficial. Now, her skill three. This is where she's crazy. She makes all your allies enraged. Having a character that gives everyone enraged is insane. It opens up infinite avenues for drafting. You can go into some characters that, like, they were using Taeyu in this. But you can go into Ambitious Tywin. Uh, Janua just came out. And if Janua's enraged, he hits twice. So Janua plus her is god combo. I mean, as long as you get that off, like, you can't strip enrage. So once you click her S3 and he gets enraged, he's going to be smacking everything. And then he's going to proc his own enrage at a certain point. So that's crazy. So there's the meta is going to shift dramatically. Politus is going to come out. AOL is going to be like, maybe people are going to be built, building her faster. But once you get S3, you're getting pushed back. So I don't know how much AOL is going to help. But unbuffable characters are going to get a big boost uh, just to keep her out of guiding light to get her... Uh, removed as fast as possible. Maybe Selene will have something. The biggest thing is Enrage. Enrage gives attack and speed. I don't think it gives defense. But <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about Vigor buff giving the extra defense. Things will be killable. 
So that is nice. It's somewhat balanced. I don't want to say it's balanced because this is insane, but it's pretty good. But you can soul burn to ignore effect res, and you can be activated every four turns. So every four turns, you get it back. So you'll have two dead turns, but she's going to be fast, really fast. So her getting four turns for maybe if you play her with a slower Jeff, like Lua would be played with slower Jeff sometimes, um, you'll get back into it, I guess. But she's a high, high aggressive, like high momentum character generally because you're getting attack buff, you're getting no defense buff. So Celos would still probably be the go-to for turn two, like slow, slower players. I don't even know if there is turn one, turn two anymore. Essentially, the game is in such a weird spot with them. I'll land a fiend. So this is insane. And decreases speed and pushes back. So it's a non-attack skill, by the way, and it pushes back. And you can ignore effect resist. That's huge. Being able to push back without touching, it means you can push back Aiden's. Um, it strips two buffs, so gets rid of protection set. Everything like that is really, really good. So that's the thing is it auto guarantees a tie when ignores effect resist. It gives Tayu his buff to where he's always going to go. It gives Janua his thing. I think there's obviously other characters too. Like Mort. <laughs> I think he was self enraged. I don't know what that does. But it's going to be really good. So now the skill one. This is also really exciting because attacks, uh, dispelling, it dispels a buff. So that's already big. Having S1 that dispels a buff is really nice. Uh, and then the, when the caster is enraged, triggers a dual attack with the ally front with the highest attack. That is crazy because you get to guarantee pick who you pull from. So it's C Lilius, but whoever you draft with the highest attack, you're guaranteed pulling. So there's a million combos you can do. Obviously, her plus Janua, you're going to pull Janua every time. Like, right, that's super good. But other things you can do, uh, Roy, you can S1 and then pull Roy, and then Roy gets CR pushed. So the only problem with her is she doesn't get an extra turn. So skill on her turn, she gets her skill three, and then you have to wait to get this. So I don't know about activating Roy with this, if, unless you can keep him alive for one rotation. Uh, if you could, then he'll push up, and you'll guarantee to have max stacks right away. I don't know. I, I don't know. There's a bunch of things you can do, but this also makes it to where you can pick artifacts with her, because Miss Confile, you defense break, and it's a, I think it's the highest chance. So when you do a single target attack, you have a chance to defense break. So if you defense break S1 with her, element neutral, and then pull Janua, you're one-shotting. You pull your highest attack character, you're one-shotting most things. If you land that defense break, so she can kind of be using a landy. If you put her on this confile, she can hurt AU Fiend. If you dual attack into AU Fiend, defense breaker, you're mitigating damage. Lionheart Sermia is still going to proc and cleanse. I don't know. Let me know what you guys are thinking of, like, what the possibilities are. That's the most exciting thing about this. I'm just curious what you guys' opinions and what you're cooking up because there, this character has so much it can do. But either way, this is exciting. The thing is, Epic 7 has been killing it with their new characters. They're all insanely strong, which I think is really good for a game. Uh, make the new character strong. Old characters can get out of balance. It's fine. Then occasionally balance them, make them playable again. But still focus on new characters so that new players, when they get into the game and pull these characters, they have the strongest things in the game. So I don't, I hate it when a new ML5 comes out and it just sucks. So I love, or ML, ML5 or four or five star, or regular five stars. So like Janua was insane. Lia is insane, insane. So all of you that are new players that pulled Lia, Janua, if you get her, you're already, you got three super, super meta characters, which is really really nice and i don't know i don't mind the characters being overpowered because it it's creates a better new player experience it creates a still fun old player experience but as an old player it does feel bad that all of our units are getting power corrupt and we put resources into characters but you have to do that to keep a game alive you have to kill the old characters yeah there's just no other way you can't there is no balance in the world that you can do with 300 characters to make it everything usable it's just not possible so there will be times where characters come in and out of the meta. As Janua came out, we got Politus now. Politus is coming back. Politus is, I've been, Politus is really fun right now. Uh, there's other characters that are just coming back every single time a new character comes out. It's really strong. So I think Epic Seven's balancing is actually really good. People fight me on that, but I think the way they do it is perfect for an ongoing mobile gacha game. I think they nail it. Like some, some things they could maybe nerf here or there, but... Overall, I think they do a pretty solid job. But that is it. That's her. That's my opinion. I'll quit rambling. I haven't made a video in a while, so my bad. <laughs> just, I'm just excited. She's going to be fun. I should be able to get her without spending money. Cause, and I do have every ML5 in the game now. So now I'm going to feel pressured to pull every new character, which sucks. But I should have like 5,000 Mystics by the time she comes out. And I'm like 8,500 from Pity. So that's like 200 bucks. Hopefully I don't have to spend that. But we'll see.
Well, if you can pull her, at least pull on her. I'm going to tell you, at least pull on her. I would stop pulling on this banner and save and just pull on her. Even if you can't pity her, if you do get her, cool. If you don't, she's infinitely better than every character on the current banner. I mean, Lone Crystal Blown is good, but this character is, she's going to be insane. She's going to be meta-defining. All right, let me know what you think. Let me know your artifact choices you're going to do with her or any combo type ideas. Maybe an old character that wouldn't normally be usable if they're usable again. So that's all I got. It's been Mitch or Deity, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.